so Keith, a lot of people watching this, I'm sure, are just getting started in bird photography, or maybe they're they're some way along their journey in, in taking pictures of birds. Uh, you're, you know, obviously operating on a on a really high level when it comes to professional photography, wildlife photography. So, what tips would you give to people who are just starting out? And maybe what tips would you give to people who are somewhere in the middle? They've got the gear, they've started taking the photographs. What can they do to elevate their photography to the next level? I would say educating yourself about what's around your home, what's in your environment, and getting an understanding of what what birds live there, what their behaviors are like, and little indicators as to how to find them. Um, secondly, once you once you are in that identification process, and you maybe you found your little local hotspot, is to really invest time in in having you know in your own personal timing to to elevate your pictures from a bird on a perch to a bird that's actually actively doing something. Um, and patience is going to be your best friend in this entire equation. This, and, and I think if you're out there for the sheer love of it, patience is kind of a built-in thing. That's, that's one of the great things about in, an intrinsic desire is that you're there for all the right reasons. And relying on patience, getting an understanding of behaviorisms of what's in your area and then just grinding it out until you find those nice little local spots, be it a pond or a nice wetland or whatever is in your area. The good thing with birds is they are everywhere and uh, anybody can be a birder. That is true. I mean, Diego and I, living proof. <laughs> like actually, in that, in that you know, technicality, technicality line, videography or photography? I know they are intertwined for you, kids, but video or photo and, and, and why? It's a great question. I mean, for me, I, I live in this weird duality where both I'm obsessed with, but I would say, um, gosh, it just depends on what your end game is. If you, if you have a love for video, you're going to need to know how to edit it and do something with that video. So that becomes sort of the weird X factor and dividing line between like what you can do with it. I will say that when it comes to birds, I find video to be more forgiving because you're gonna, that moment's gonna be baked in when the bird actually does something, so long as you can keep up with it and track it and, you know, because you're gonna have to do that with a still photo as well. At least you're gonna find the full breadth of a moment. The still photography is a hunt, right? It's the hunt for an isolated moment. Video is, is the hunt for a moment to transpire across the screen. So you, you have a little bit more bandwidth there. So. I think it really is, it just boils down to what, what your heart wants to do, how you want to capture it. But I, I find, and I don't say this lightly because working in, in, in motion has its own challenges in, in, in a variety of ways. When it comes to birding, I find that motion is a little bit more on the forgiving side. Cool, cool. And on a more technical level, I'm sure this is something that um, a lot of people out there will be interested to know. What's your, your preferred gear setup? For photographing birds, what 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 do you, camera do you use? What what do you always take in the field? What are your essentials? So for me, um, and I'm fortunate that I, I you know I get I have access to some like pretty big lenses. But my favorite setup is a, a Canon R5 and a 600 millimeter f4. Yeah, with that setup right there, um, and I also carry like a one to five with me, so I have a little bit of variability. But if I've just got my R5 and a 600. I'm in good shape. I can go out and, and, and see and experience quite a bit. Hand, handheld or you tripod or monopod? You know, I usually try to bring a monopod if I know it's going to be a longer day. Um, if I'm filming, of course, that's a different setup. I'm going to have a little something a little bit more, you know, larger. But yeah, if I'm just out birding for the day, um, some, if I, sometimes I'll just go out on my mountain bike and I'll just ride some local trails, in which case I'll bring a 1 to 500 zoom and you know just a body that will fit in a small backpack if if i have more time on my hands and i want to get a little burlier i'll take the 600 out in the field with me and hike around with it i try not to bike with it because you don't want all that shake can kind of mess the lens up um but uh yeah i mean you you definitely want to get something on the longer side of things um i know they make a lot of 150 to 600 mil lenses that are within a relatively affordable range um they also, what you do with the spotting scope on your phone is, is an incredible solution to go out and be very fast and light. And the quality is great. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's good quality for video. In, I mean, photographing is not as great. And it, it allows you to share with people because you have the scope so everyone can come and look. So when you're with friends or clients, it's just great. Actually, in my Mechana expedition recently, I was, I was thinking what I'm doing here with the scope, trying to digiscope a quick bird. I should have like a small, you know, point and shoot camera like Chris has and gets like very decent, nice shots. Like, right. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the, on the context indeed. Yeah, absolutely. And how much weight you're willing to carry. You know, for me, I'm always going to go heavier because um, even if I'm doing it recreationally, I st I'm still like a, I'm obsessed with quality, you know, and it's just this, this default for better or worse. And that's why, that's why I use the R5. It has a huge file. The video file is gorgeous. And, you know, in that 600, is just going to give you that really beautiful look, you know, wash the background out, do the whole thing. Um, but it all depends as this, this like economical advantages to going smaller, lighter and using different, different stuff. But I'm pretty pedantic when it comes down to quality. So I'm, I'll suffer a little bit more. 